Most drummers out there use coded batters on their snare drums. In fact, it's fair to say that most of them have never even considered or tried a clear batter on their snare drum. Today, we're gonna find out whether or not this even matters. Anybody who's been with us for a while knows that once upon a time, we made a video about clear snare drum batters. However, we have never actually gone down the rabbit hole about whether or not they actually give us a dramatic sound via a back-to-back -back comparison. So today, we're doing something a little bit different, a little arts and crafts, a little DIY, and we're gonna get to the bottom of this. We are gonna be comparing a coded G12 and then two iterations of a coded where we have removed varying degrees of coating from that head with a chemical process ending at a fully clear batter. Without further ado, let's do it. We love this kind of thing here, being able to follow along as you can hear each iteration of difference moving from the first sound to something dramatically different at the end. Now just to make sure, let's do a black and white binary test where we don't get to see which head it is. This is going to be coded and non-coded. Let's see if we can hear the difference. Could you hear which one was which? Me neither. They sound exactly the same, which was not what we were expecting today when we started this and turned out to be a really wonderful surprise because this is exactly why you've got to experiment on your own and educate yourself about the choices that you're making, even with something as simple as a snare batter. The fascinating thing here is that like a lot of parts of the drum set, if you can see it, you're gonna have preconceived notions about what you're hearing, and this is gonna to start to make you think you're hearing things that you're not, even subtle things. And this goes to whether or not the heads are coded, what kind of beater you have on the bass drum pedal, what do the cymbals look like, all of it.
there are a lot of factors that go into how we feel value about parts of our drum set. It could be how much the snare drum cost, where you were when you bought that cymbal, whether or not it's the same snare drum head that your favorite player uses and you're trying to go for a similar sound. All of this stuff can completely color what we think we're hearing when we're looking at a drum and playing it. On the flip side, there's a lot to be gleaned from breaking out of any patterns that we're into and questioning anything that we consider to just be flat truth, such as snare drum heads are supposed to be coded. In case anybody's curious, the reason that snare drum heads are coded, and indeed why there are coded heads in the first place, is not for muffling or to quell overtones, it's to emulate the texture of natural hide drum heads because back when these were invented, that was what people were using, and they were using a lot of brushes on there which required a texture to be able to get lateral sounds to be audible. If it wasn't for brush playing, it's entirely possible that these heads would have been clear or maybe died from the get-go. It's impossible to say, but what we do know is that if you're not playing brushes and you're not doing lateral movements on the head, you don't need the coating. If you'd like to learn more about what we did today and see some more footage along with everything else that we have to offer, jump through the link below to our Patreon. There's a lot of great stuff on there and it's a great way to help us continue to make this series. It's also worth noting that the way that the things that we see affects us has a certain kind of value in terms of what we then do when we sit down. For instance, if you're coming up to a drum set that's not yours to play it and it has clear heads all over it and you're used to coded ones, you're going to have an experience beyond what it feels like to just hit them because it's not what you're used to. So getting used to a lot of things can be very valuable and also knowing what they're capable of if they do do something different is equally valuable. In case any of you are curious, the process that we went through to remove the coating from the heads today was actually super simple, and if you do want to experiment with this, it's definitely something you can do at home. All we did was mask off an area of the head with gaff tape, you can use masking tape or whatever, it's more about just getting a seam around it so that we know where we want to stop. And then we used simple isopropyl rubbing alcohol and paper towels, and with a little bit of elbow grease and a little bit of time, we were able to wipe the coating clean off and end up with these kind of geometric patterns on there where the coating was removed. The curious thing about the way that this went is that we were imagining that we were going to get something akin to uh, having a muffling ring on the head because we were leaving the coating in increasing degrees just close to the edge, which is what prompted us to push all the way to a fully clear head to see if suddenly there was going to be a jump in the change in behavior of the drum. And as you can hear, there wasn't, which was super surprising, super fascinating, and made us question a lot of things that we took for granted too. In the past, we've done some comparison videos and deep dives about coded versus clear heads on toms. The big difference being that we definitely heard an audible difference both with changing out the resos as well as changing out the batters from coded to clear and back again. We are thinking now, because of this experiment today, that the reason why those were so much more different is because they are under a significantly lower amount of tension, which completely changes the way that the mass of the head interacts with the energy that you're giving to it. This means for us that in a future episode, we're going to need to do this whole thing again with the toms and move through a few different tensions to see if it's actually what it is. This is the way that we move through experiments here and the way that we find new ideas for episodes. And we would ask you, the viewer, also to consider going through with experiments rather than just forming opinions based on a YouTube video or whatever it is that you might see on the internet, because even if those are accurate, and here we are trying to give you as accurate of information as we possibly can, no compression, no EQ, all of that, but at the end of the day, it's still worth doing it yourself rather than just learning a thing from seeing it and deciding that that's the truth now. That's a recipe for also not really knowing whether or not you want to do it yourself or where you would use that change if it was something that sounded good to you. If you can experiment, create your own hypotheses, and discover whether or not you're actually right or wrong in your beliefs, it can only be a good thing.
The bottom line here is that whether or not you want to use a coated head or an uncoated head on your snare is not really the point. The point is that we want to understand how these things behave and whether or not our perceptions are actually bearing out in reality. What we're not doing is telling you that you need to start playing clear heads on your snare or that there's something wrong with playing clear heads on your snare. If you do, you don't need to buy anything new. You don't need to change what you're doing or the way that you think. What we want you to do is educate your ears. Use what we do here to help you learn more about that and form your own conclusions so that you can get back to playing drums. Oh, and by the way, for the blind test earlier, it was coded and then uncoded.